Today, the hustlers are down at the White Cliffs of Dover to show our secret cameras a very devious scam. Jess, Paul and Alex are undertaking a high-risk, high-reward hustle and their targets are booze cruisers who come off the ferry from France. This is the Custom Sea Scam. Uniform in this situation is a very powerful tool. The reason for that is if you do stick a customs uniform on and speak with any sense of authority, people are very unlikely to question you. Uh, people are very unlikely to start asking for ID and how do I know what you're telling me is true. All that just goes out the window. They just do what they're told. And that's why the penalty for impersonating a customs officer is so high. It's up to a year imprisonment, so you shouldn't have been naughty boys. <laughs> Alex and Paul have pulled into a residential area to do some custom modding to their white van. Due to the dangerous nature of this hustle, they want as few people as possible to see them in their fake customs uniforms. Meanwhile, Jess is acting as their lookout and is scouting for a mark in a car loaded up with booze and any police or real customs officers on the prowl. Jess spots a good hit and calls Paul with the details of the car. Jess. Yeah, I've got the mark. It's a silver polo. OK. The hustle is on. They find the target and trail it for a while, making sure they find a quiet spot away from the port and its authorities before pulling them over. The car they've picked out has a visible load of booze in the back. But as Alex and Paul drive past, they get a pleasant surprise. The car contains four nervous-looking lads, top of the hit list of custom suspects. Alex and Paul step out of the van. In their uniforms, they look the genuine article, but they'll need to do this by the book to be believed. Remember, our hustlers are playing out this con in full public view. At any moment, they could be caught out by the real authorities. The clock is on. OK. So ask everybody inside to get some form of ID, passport, driver's licence, just about a time of the vehicle. Thank you. Our hustlers understand how customs officials think and Alex has spotted that four likely lads in a booze-filled car were probably stopped by the French authorities first. Alex puts his cards on the table and takes a risk. And um, we've been radioed over from Calais. You just come from Calais, yeah? yeah? Yeah. You were stopped there, I believe, yeah? Customs had a look at you there? Just said where, wherever you came from. Uh, OK. All right, they just asked you a few questions there. It's paid off. He's absolutely right, and the hustler's cover is now backed up even further. Well, my colleague and I are going to have a look in the car. Is there anything you want to declare to us now before we do that? The guys aren't putting up any kind of fight. Yeah, All right, anything on you you shouldn't have? Go ahead. All right. Volkswagen Polo. And if they weren't totally convinced, they will be now. Jess radios through and reads out their car registration number for all to hear. It's another slick operation from our trio, and the boys don't stand the chance of seeing through it. Could you line up over here, please, lad? Thank you. Nothing sharp in here. I don't want to find out the hard way. No? No, no. Okay. Okay. Paul lines up the lads like a bunch of naughty schoolboys. Looking defeated and doing exactly as they're told, now is the perfect time for our hustlers to strike for the swag. Alex delivers the bad news. All right. Customs have got reason to believe that these goods are intended for commercial use, OK? We have to confiscate these goods, we have to impound these goods and take them to a holding warehouse, OK? What you have to do now is you go back down to Customs, Customs House, we'll give you the directions, exactly where to go, yeah? There, some officers are going to ask you a few questions. Once they're satisfied that these goods are for personal use, they'll direct you to the warehouse where you can pick them up, OK? Understood? Yeah? All right, we need to get all that stuff out and into the back of that van in front of you, OK? Yeah. Quickly now. So, our hustlers have seized the goods, and to add insult to injury, they've even got the lads doing all the fetching and carrying. It's amazing what a uniform can do, but they need to get a move on and shift them all into the back of the van as soon as possible. The boys have managed to put an enormous amount of booze into their car, and this is taking longer than the hustlers expected. They're running the risk of being caught red-handed at any time. Finally, the last bottles are loaded in, and the hustlers are relieved to have escaped the eyes of the law. 
You'd think taking hundreds of pounds from right under someone's nose would be a little harder than this. If you go down there now, they should be able to process you very quickly, so the sooner you do it, the sooner you get your stuff back, yeah? But because they think they're getting their goods back later that day, the boys don't see too much of a problem. They think they're being inconvenienced. <laughs> when in reality, they're being blatantly robbed. Oh dear lads, you've been well and truly hard. In everyday life, we simply haven't got time to check out every assumption we're making all of the time. So if we see someone in uniform, if we see someone in a police uniform, we assume it's a policeman. So uniforms are kind of shortcuts. They allow us to make assumptions about people. And once we've made that assumption, then normally the person in the uniform is in some kind of position of power to ask us for money, to ask us to do something, whatever. And so we tend to just go along with that. It's an assumption we make, like most assumptions, most of the time it's true. In the con game, it's used to fleece us. Incredibly believable, and I was petrified. I didn't know what to do. I just thought they were absolute and I was just like, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> and the fact that we had to carry all the booze into yeah. the van was just <laughs> gutting. We know where customs officers work. They work at the port of entry. Uh, or they'll have some sort of you know, official uh, documentation. And if they're not at the port, if they're not in, in the environment where you would expect them, then make that phone call to the local customs office to check out who they are.